All right, welcome to our recap of day seven of Advent of Code. And on today's problem, we are accessing some kind of file system and we are trying to determine how much space is used on that system so that we can uh, delete some items and free up space to run an update. Uh, so our input is a series of commands and terminal output uh, that we're running on the device. The only commands we're running are changing the directory and listing uh, the directory. So we might uh, list and see that there are different directories that we can subsequently move into. And then there are different files as well. And the files each have a size. Uh, and we want to track how much uh, how much total memory is used by the files in each directory. So uh, the way that our input gets laid out, we have our root, then we have this A directory, and this E directory, we have a file here, and we have some other files. And the important insight, one of them is that so this file i, it belongs in the directory e, but it also belongs in the directory a and in the root directory. So each file belongs to each of the directories all the way up its, uh, all the way up its hierarchy. Uh, another important thing to note is that uh, we could have potentially a slash e, and then theoretically we could also have d slash e in your larger. Uh, input, so we need the full path in order to be uh, for it to be unique. Uh, but in the first part of the problem, what we're going to do is we're going to find every directory whose total size is less than I think 100,000 bytes, and just take the sum of all those. That's our first part. Our second part is we are going to uh, find the, uh, the the smallest directory that we can delete while still freeing up enough space to run the update. So we have our total system size is like 70 million bytes. We need uh, 30 million bytes to be free in order to run the update. So we have to find um, you know, between how much space we've used and which directory we need to delete in order to free up that space. So how do we go about uh, coding this? So first we need to parse our input. And there are basically four different types of lines in this input. So I made a data type to capture that and we're just going to read everything line by line like we often do and there are just four different parsers for the four different uh, commands or outputs we might get so we have a change directory parser so we read, read the cd string and we have these different cases we can go up a directory we can go to the root or we can read a, a, a directory name um, and uh, you know reading a listed directory reading a listed file use you know parse positive number Nothing too complicated within these. It's just a lot of applications of the alternative operator, uh, which is an important thing to know uh, when you are uh, when you're doing parsing. So that's how we get our inputs. Now we've got a list of these commands to run, and we have to process those. So what I ultimately settled on, I, I went through a couple different iterations of the solution for this problem. And what I ultimately settled on is that we fold through our commands. So we're reading in one command. Remember, line type is command. We read through one command at a time, and we're just updating our current file system state. The file system state stores uh, the current directory that we're in, because remember, we change directory over and over again. So that's the list of strings capturing that, that path. And it also uh, tracks, so uh, this occurrence map is referring to uh, for each complete path, uh, we will see the size of all of the files that we have seen in that complete path. And we'll see how this updates. So for each of our different commands, we have to update our state in a different way. If we change directory, we update the current directory. So if we go, you know, cd dot dot, uh, we change the directory. So that's the tail of the current uh, directory. So we go up a level by removing an item from our, uh, our current path. Otherwise, we take uh, we, we take the directory that we changed to, and we sort of append to that. I suppose you could add another case to this where it's cd slash, but I, I looked in the inputs and the cd slash only appears in the beginning, so not a big deal. Uh, list directory command doesn't actually change our state. Uh, we, we process that command, but it doesn't actually affect anything. Um, and then when we list, uh, when we see the things that we've listed, uh, again, listing a directory doesn't actually change our state. We just see that option so that we could potentially uh, use CD on it later. Uh, but listing a file does change it. Uh, what we need to do now is take all of the directories in our current structure 
and we need to update the amount of uh, size that is stored for each of those all the way up the hierarchy, because remember this file counts for all of its super directories. So that's what this fold is doing. We're updating uh, our directory map for each of these uh, individual elements. Uh, so we're increasing its, uh, its size by this, by this file. So add key by the size. And in, a function here that I don't think I've used before is tails. So I, let me actually bring up GHCI because that'll, that'll show what tails is doing. So um, if we have a list, let's say let A equal one, two, three, take um, uh, data.list. And so we'll say tails of A. Notice how we get the complete list A and then the first tail, so two, three, and then the second tail is three and then the empty list. Uh, we use init on that because we want to exclude this empty list. So if we say init tails of A, now we get one, two, three. Now we get one, two, three, two, three, and three. And that's what we want. That's all of the different uh, directory listings that we want to update. Because remember, within this directory map, we're, st we're storing a full list rather than the individual names. Uh, but that's basically it for this function. Um, we just update the directory map, and now uh, we should come out of this, this folding process uh, <clears throat> with a directory map where every sort of full listed path uh, has the size of all the files within it. Uh, so how do we process that? So we grab this directory map, and then uh, we have this find easy solution function. Really, we're just taking the different elements of that, and we're filtering all of them that are less than or equal to 100,000, and we're just taking the sum of those. So that's not actually too hard. Um, for tar part two of the problem, we're actually going to sort all of our elements by their size. Now, the amount of used space is actually going to be the last element of all these di directory sizes, because that should be the root, because the root contains all of the files. Uh, so the current unused space is just our limit 70 million minus that used space. <clears throat> and now we're going to use data.list.find, and we're going to just find the first directory, or the, the first size, I should say, uh, in this list such that if we add that to our current unused space, it'll be greater than 30 million. That's the amount of space we need to run this update. So we return that number and that gives us our final solution. So we can go ahead and you know, run our tests and it should all be passing. So these are the numbers I ended up getting. Uh, and that's our solution. So that's all for day seven. Uh, I'll be back again tomorrow, hopefully, assuming I have enough time for, uh, for the day eight solution. So stay tuned for that and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and subscribe to the Monday morning Haskell mailing list so that you can stay up to date with all of these solutions. All right. Thank you for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.